वेलकम बैक गाइज सो इन लास्ट वीडियो आई वॉज टॉकिंग अबाउट द ब्रीफ इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ कम्प्लीटेबल फ्यूचर राइट सो इन दिस वीडियो वी विल सी दैट हाउ वी कैन डिजाइन अ कम्प्लीटेबल फ्यूचर एंड हाउ दिस विल हेल्प अस टू रन इन द कोड इन पैरल सो बेसिकली इफ यू लुक एट दिस क्लास एग्जाम्पल टू राइट आई हैव अ मेन मेथड एंड द फर्स्ट लाइन सो फॉरगेट अबाउट दिस लाइन ओके let me remove this line for now let me delete this now if you look at guys i am calling a method run async from the completable future right so as i said completable future is a class so when it is a class it has lot of method when you put dot right it has run async uh, supply async and you have lot of other methods also which we'll see that going forward right so here let's say uh, in general so if you forget about completable future in general what happens where your code execution will start your code execution will start from the main method so basically the main is nothing but it, it is a thread in java right so this is one thread this guy will be the responsible of running your entire code so if you have um, let's say five method calls inside the main method the main method will execute all the code line by line right now uh, to solve the uh, problem of sequential execution we uh, they have provided us completable completable future as a part of java 1.8 even before that we have lot of other way to do that the same thing but this has much more flexibility it is much more useful than other our thread executors and other that right we'll see that we'll try to understand how this will help us now if you look at first of all here uh, the coding wise it's very simple uh, let's say you need to run one piece of code in the separate thread okay you have a requirement assume that where you need to call one method into a separate thread so generally you have let's say you have one api which you want to call in the different thread right and this is your main method so what you can do simply if you look at here the completable future dot run async so go to this method first we'll try to understand i'll pick up the method one by one and i'll i will explain you each and every method of the completable future so if you we'll go inside the run async basically this guy has a return type of the completable future of void which means one thing is clear is this method is not going to return anything second thing this method argument will take runnable so you can supply runnable to this method argument right now if you look at here this is very uh, simple example very basic example will cover all the concept so here if you look at in this run async basically this is the implementations of you are unable okay i am using the concept of anonymous inner class so even i can write this outside so for you just to explain you i can write this runnable runnable is equal to new runnable so you can see that it's a anonymous inner class right so you know that we can uh, we can implement the anonymous inner class and we can write some implementations of the run method and run method you know that basically this will help you to run your thread right like that's what we have learned in the core java concept right here the concept is bit different which uh, which i will show you how it works so this is the old way of writing the code so it's the same thing if you look at here the same runnable i have supplied inside the run async method okay and i am just doing the thread dot slip okay so i just wanted to slip for uh, uh, less than 1 milliseconds and you know that the thread dot slip will throw the exceptions interrupt the exceptions right now how this is useful first of all we need to understand how this is useful okay so let's do one thing let me remove this code and let me remove this get also okay let's remove entire things now this is your plain simple code where in the run async you are calling one runnable right this is the block of the code right and if you run that 
if you run this what happens look at here you did not get any output okay though you have print a statement here but you did not get any output what happened here is basically this main thread was running in the separate thread this async you name itself that run async which means it will run into the asynchronous way it will run in the different thread all together this guy is running in the different thread right but we did not wait for this thread okay here you can you can see that we are not waiting for this thread to complete the task okay we are running in the async but we are not waiting that right so now what happened basically is if let's say if if i have to show you why i am saying that both are running in the different thread when you do thread dot current thread dot get name right this thread name will be main thread and you go and print the same thing let's say here right and let's see that like what name is getting printed okay so let's run this first so you can see that guys one difference here you can notice so one thread the main thread which is running in the main thread okay the first line of code is getting executed by the main thread it is clear now first line of code is getting executed by the main thread whereas your completable future dot run async is getting executed by the different thread altogether which is done by the fork join pool this i will cover it like how this works right so for now you just try to understand this is running in the different thread right so both thread is running in the parallel okay now for the async the problem with async is when you are running the code in the async and let's say you want to you want to wait for this uh, async to complete you know completable future has a method called get method dot get so this get method will make sure that your future is completed okay your async processing is completed so we need to call future on this reference we need to call a get method now this guy will throw the exception so this guy will throw the exception so click on add throw declarations this will throw interrupted and execution exceptions okay so when you'll go this implementation press control click on get method you can see that this guy throws two exceptions interrupted and execution right you can see that the java documentations wait if necessary for this future to complete and then return its result you can see that when let's say you want to wait for that to complete you need to call the get method now same program just execute that so before that this was the output guys okay this was the output and this print was not getting printed okay now if i'll run that what will happen let's see that now will the output will change yes the output is changing and you can see that your print is also getting executed which means when you call future.get it will make sure that your async thread will will get executed and it will wait it will wait till your you know async thread will get executed right and uh, what we understood the first thing is uh, this line this piece of line uh, is getting executed in the main thread and this guy is getting executed into the separate thread right so now we need to understand little bit into the architecture like how this works right completable future how it works so basically what happens when you call a method okay in the async way okay uh, by default it uses you know fork join pool by default it uses fork join pool and the fork join pool it's a dynamic in nature okay it has the enough thread in the pool in the join pool which will help you to do your task okay what i'm trying to show that uh, say that if you go inside that run async when you go inside that you look at here this returns async run stage and this is async pool you can see that this is the async pool right now press control click on async pool so you can see that use common pool okay and when when let's say you want to use common pool it will fetch the thread from the fork join pool right and you can see that the java documentations if they will not do that you cannot achieve the parallelism right because you want to run in the parallel so you need to pick the thread from the fork pool when you don't supply there is other way also 
okay let's say you don't want to use a thread from the fork join pool how do you do that that we'll see later but here try to understand even though you don't supply okay internally it it will fetch the thread from the join pool fork join pool okay so that is the reason uh, this fork join pool when you look at your output you know it is picking one worker thread okay from the fork join pool and all fork join pool is the daemon thread which runs in the background okay all uh, this you know fork join pool is the daemon thread why i'm saying that it's a daemon thread if you'll go and let's say if you'll go and print get thread dot is daemon okay you will get output as a true because it runs in the background right you can see that it is returning as a true right now uh, in next video i will talk about how this you know fork join pool uh, fork join pool works right and what is the default pool size you will get and uh, how many parallel thread you can achieve everything i will talk in my next video guys okay so with this, I'll close this video and next video I'll talk about the other concepts. Thank you guys. Thank you for watching this.